फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ केसेस फाइलिंग ऑफ चार्ज शीट्स एंड टेकिंग ऑफ कोगनीजेंस बाय द कम्पिटेंट कोर्ट इन रिलेशन टू द ऑफेंस अलेज टू हैव बीन कमिटेड बाय द रिस्पोंडेंट्स इन द पास्ट इज बट वन ऑफ द रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर इन्वोकेशन ऑफ सेक्शन थ्री ऑफ द मकोका कॉन्टिन्यूएशन ऑफ अनलॉफुल एक्टिविटीज इज द सेकेंड एंड इक्वली इम्पोर्टेंट रिक्वायरमेंट दैट ओट टू बी सेटिस्फाइड it is only if an organized crime is committed by the accused after the promulgation of makoka that he may seen in the light of the previous charge sheets and the cognizance taken by the competent court be said to have committed an offence under section 3 of the act in the case at hand the offences which the respondents are alleged to have committed after the promulgation of makoka were not proved against them the acquittal of the respondents in crimes number 37 and 38 of 2001 signified that they were not involved in the commission of the offences with which they were charged not only that the respondents were acquitted of the charge under the arms act even in crimes case number 1 and 2 of 2002 no appeal against that acquittal had been filed by the state this implied that the prosecution had failed to prove the second ingredient required for completion of an offence under makoka the high court was therefore right in holding that section 3 of the makoka could not be invoked only on the basis of the previous charge sheets for section 3 would come into play only if the respondents were proved to have committed an offence for gain or any pecuniary benefit or undue economic or other advantage after the promulgation of makoka such being the case the high court was in our opinion justified in allowing the appeal and setting aside the order passed by the trial court by analyzing the expression continuing unlawful activity the apex court has held that the filing of more than one charge sheets for the offenses punishable with more than 3 years imprisonment is not enough but it must be satisfied that the continuation of unlawful activities is the second and equally important requirement that ought to be satisfied it is only if an organized crime is committed by the accused after the promulgation of the act that has to be considered in the light of the previous charge sheets thus the contention raised by the learned advocate with regard to the prospective effect of the act is not palatable in view of the aforesaid observations made in the apex court but at the same time it is noticed in the present case that the expression continuing unlawful activity is not satisfied in view of the offenses which are considered by the authority in the instant case for invoking the provisions of the act against the applicant the state has relied on five offenses and one experiment order registered against the applicant the details are as under the act came into force on 1st december 2019 the last offence which is registered against the applicant is of 2019 registered wide fir number 29 of 2019 item 1 for which the charge sheet is filed on 21st january 2019 which is prior to the promulgation of the act the offence at serial number 6 being fir number 14 of 2019 under sections 364a 387 120b 114 of the ipc has been quashed by this court by order dated 3 december 2019 passed in criminal miscellaneous application number 21872 of 2019 and hence the same could not have been considered by the authority while registering the fir on 27th november 2020 the applicant has not committed any offence after the promulgation of the act at serial number 6 the state has referred to the extension order dated 3rd march 2019 also which is against the provisions of section 2c of the act the supreme court has held that it is only if an organized crime is committed by the accused after the promulgation of the act that has to be considered in the light of the previous charge sheets 
Thus, the state has misdirected itself with regard to the registration of offences against the applicant. Hence, the applicant cannot be allowed to be further incarcerated in jail. Having perused the materials placed on record and taking into consideration the facts of the case, nature of allegations, gravity of offences, role attributed to the accused, without discussing the evidence in detail at this stage, this court is inclined to grant regular bail to the applicant. It is clarified that this court has not expressed any opinion with regard to the applicant not being a member or a member of the crime syndicate. Being dissatisfied with the aforesaid impugned order passed by the High Court releasing the respondent accused on bail, the State of Gujarat is here before this court with the present appeal. Mr. Tushar Mehta, the Solicitor General, vehemently submitted that the dictum as laid by this court in Shiva alias Shivaji Supra requires a relook as the said dictum frustrates the very object of enacting the 2015 Act. Stop.